I have eagerly been waiting for Take Two Interactive's earning call, which just ended there. There was four main things I really wanted to hear in this investors call. The first thing I wanted to know about was how Reddit Online is doing. Have we getting any figures for that? And are they going to acknowledge the hashtag save Reddit Online? I also wanted to know if they talked about GTA 6 after their latest tweet from Rockstar Games. Also wanted to know will they address anything about the GTA trilogy mishap? And also just the Zynga purchase and how it could affect the existing IPs, mainly Reddit Online and GTA. So the first one I just want to knock off quickly is GTA 6. Yeah, they didn't talk about that at all, so we can just get rid of that one off the table. If you like this kind of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell to make sure you get all the notifications. This is mainly a Red Dead channel, but we do cover some other games from time to time. So when it came to Red Dead Online, I really wanted to know how it was performing. And I was very surprised when I heard Strauss Zelnick comment on what were the main performers of the third quarter. Turning to our third quarter results, our better than expected performance was driven primarily by Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy, the definitive edition, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online, and NBA 2K22. I found this quite surprising that he didn't mention Grand Theft Auto Online, but this was again repeated by Lenny Goldstein, who is the CFO. Our outperformance was primarily driven by Grand Theft Auto The Trilogy, the definitive edition, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online and NBA 2K22. You can imagine me just sitting there with a confused head on me just asking myself if this is pushing performance why is Rockstar investing less and less and why is there a big movement called hashtag Red Dead Online. Of course I presume this was because their sales of Red Dead Redemption 2 over the holidays brought in a lot of new customers for Red Dead Online which Strauss later confirmed for me. Red Dead Redemption 2 also had an excellent quarter. The title's out performance was primarily driven by strong holiday sales and to date it has sold in nearly 43 million units worldwide. 43 million units! Normally on a quarter it will sell about a million units but on the holidays it obviously will sell more but it's still sold 2 million more copies than it did this time last year and it sold 2.5 million more copies than the holidays in 2020. And of course, Red Dead Online comes with Red Dead Redemption 2, so how does that affect that? Well, in addition, Red Dead Online outperformed our expectations due to strong sales of Red Dead Redemption 2 and the continued influx of new players. Which is something we've all said in the community. It's as if Rockstar is always getting new players into the community, but they're just not retaining them and they're just going off playing other games once they burn through the content. So if they kept adding more content and updates that would retain the customer base and build the community bigger and bigger and it would make a better profit for them. Strauss talks about what updates were added in this quarter and they are. Alongside a series of updates, including the fourth installment of the Quick Draw Club, All Hallows Call to Arms, the Halloween Pass 2 and the Holiday Call to Arms. Look, Strauss Zelnick is the CEO of Take Two Interactive, not Rockstar Games. I'm pretty sure they sent over the list of you know the highlights of what they want to present to investors, and he just reads it. These were not big updates at all. I mean, the Quick Draw Club was just 20 levels that people burned through in a few hours. The Halloween Call to Arms were a good update. I really enjoyed them getting brought into the game. But in reality, that was just four new variations on the existing Call to Arms. We did have the Halloween Pass. It always gets a few people on, but again, it's not that hard to run through that pass. There's only a few items in there worth really getting, and it's not 20 gold bars. And the Holiday Call to Arms was again just a uh, building on what they already added in the blood money update mid-year. The thing I did like about the Red Dead Online updates this year was the pacing. I genuinely liked that they had stuff coming out each month. I just don't think there was enough things to really purchase by. You couldn't buy a property. You weren't going to compete on a heist. You weren't like look at the contract for example for Grand Theft Auto Online. You got Dr. Dre. You got a new business that you can now run. You got new telephone missions. You got new contract missions that pushed a narrative story which is what Rockstar is great at doing. You got a host new vehicles, new weapons. It's like it was a huge update. In Red Dead Online we got a few clothing items that were time limited that you could purchase and uh, a few new time limited call to arms. And of course in December you had the same event week which was now stretched out for a month which continued into New Year and then into February. It legitimately breaks my heart that all those new fans that came in that are loving to play Red Dead Online, they're enjoying working through all the collector role, the bounty hunter role and the uh, 
the traitor role and once they get to a certain point they will just move on to other games not only is the possibility there for content but you can clearly see there's a huge possibility for concurrent spending because of the audience that it is bringing in it's just not retaining them thankfully someone asked a question that i really wanted a concrete answer to which was what is the new cohort spending on Red Dead Online and what was it compared to existing spending on Red Dead Online? Sadly, we didn't get any real clarification. And in terms of um, the new cohort spending, um, we don't have any real details on that. And that's really it there. That is the elephant in the room that everybody really wants to know the answer to. They've said clearly that Red Dead Online performed better than expectations. And as I've mentioned before, if your expectations are really, really low, well, you know, it might not be that hard to outperform them. They've consistently said in every the investors call that Red Dead Online you know, significantly outperformed their expectations. But if their expectations were high and they kept outperforming them, well, I think we'd see bigger and bigger updates in Red Dead Online so they can get more more customers. But in fact, we see the opposite. We are seeing smaller and smaller updates. One thing I found interesting was GT Online didn't exceed their uh, expectations, but instead just met it, which is interesting considering how much money was probably put into the contract the dlc they added thankfully another question did ask for more clarification on rcs or recurrent consumer spending so for rcs this quarter um nba 2k22 outperformed as well as um red dead online and gta online was in line with our strong expectations and when you create the contract dlc that was a lot of money put into that so that would definitely have high expectations also if you look at google trends to get an idea of how the search term for gt online was over the last five years you can see obviously there in 2020 the casino heist knocked a huge huge amount of interest in the search term for GTA Online. You can see another couple of bumps there with the Cayo Perico heist as well as Los Santos tuners update. And you can see there the contract DLC didn't really generate a lot of interest in the search term for GTA Online. Of course, comparing that with Red Dead Online, you can see bar the initial boost of interest at the start. It's like been fairly low compared to Grand Theft Auto Online and has been dropping off a lot more in recent. Of course, this comparison is by no means definitive. I mean, people could be searching Red Dead Redemption 2 online or GTA 5 online. I mean, this is just a very quick look compare. But in the end of the day, if they were making a lot more money from Red Dead Online, we would be seeing a lot bigger updates and a lot updates more frequently. I think the thing that always throws me off though is when they talk about net bookings or how many profits they're expecting to get from each of the titles, these are what they project and list off. The largest contributors to net bookings are expected to be NBA 2K, Grand Theft Auto Online and Grand Theft Auto 5, which includes Grand Theft Auto 5 for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online, Grand Theft Auto the Trilogy, the Definitive Edition, and WWE 2K22. So there you see Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online are still in there. Now maybe it's Red Dead Redemption 2 is perking up Red Dead Online and they just added in to save face. But it's obviously one of your heavy hitters for profits. So why aren't you investing more into it? It's kind of like saying, hey, Tiny Tina's not making as much money as GTA 5. Let's just stop making that and push on to Grand Theft Auto Online. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's a different team that are on both games. And it's a different audience that you are targeting. It doesn't need to be either or. It can be both. Why aren't they investing more in the Red Dead franchise and propping up Red Dead Online, getting a new team in there and retaining customers instead of just churning through new customers? I mean, there is potential there in terms of content you can create and sales that you can make. There's a huge audience for Red Dead Redemption 2. You should be converting them into Red Dead Online after they play through that amazing story. It just needs good quality updates the same way that Grand Theft Auto Online got to help it prosper and become a strong heavy hitter. Speaking about updates, I know a lot of people are just waiting for a Grand Theft Auto uh, trilogy update because they just seem to have left it there and not patch it or anything. There are still a lot of bugs in it and thankfully somebody did ask about that and were they going to fix it? Yes, we are totally focused on quality here and we always want to deliver the best possible experience. Very occasionally we fall short. And I think the trilogy was an example of that. And, and, and the, uh, the title was launched with some issues. We've addressed many of them. There are more fixes to come. 
And that is good news because there's a lot of bugs there. So I genuinely hope they do go back and fix that up and really do justice to those legendary game titles. I honestly do hope they focus on that and really get that perfect uh, before they move on to another title like another Bully remaster or something like that. Someone did ask as well about pricing for the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy on mobile and there was nothing confirmed. They haven't dealt with or figured out the pricing for that yet. I was also a little curious on some news in Take Two purchasing Zynga and I was really more interested on how that was going to impact things like Grand Theft Auto Online and GTA Online. Uh, there wasn't anything really on that which I found overly conclusive really. Just the usual kind of jargon like synergies with existing IPs so yeah look it's still possible we could see some sort of GTA Online mobile or Red Dead Online mobile game but we shall have to wait and see. There are some of the main takeaways that I pulled from the uh, investor call. Obviously, I'm mainly concerned with how this might relate to Red Dead Online, uh, so I focus mostly on that, but I just added a few little things in for the other titles, which I thought people might be interested in. Overall, it doesn't make me any bit hopeful about Red Dead Online. It just seems like the usual stuff they churn out. I think when it comes to Red Dead Online, how we see it is if they're not investing in updates or they're not even giving us weekly changes to try to keep some interest in the game it's not overly looking good but it is nice that there is new players that keep coming in when the game goes on sale that is always nice to see and it means that when you do want to jump back on and play some red dead online you have a whole new list of people that you can play with these are all of course just my thoughts and opinions and now I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions. Did you read or listen to the investor call yourself and what were your takeaways from it? Also do you agree or disagree with me with any of the things that I just said in this? Massive thanks to everyone who supports this channel, especially to the members. You guys are incredible and I will catch you all in the next video.